been in this series called I Still Love the Church. I still love the church. I think it's relevant right now. And I think there's even more. Uh, I feel like July 2024 is going to be made a movie one day. Anybody with me on that one? It's going to be a movie. Like, we are living in a script. This is a, so many people are like, we're in a simulation. I don't, right? Like, this is getting crazier day by day. But what I do know is that the world is not going to stop being the world. I'll even say more clear, the world is going to be good at being the world. I think we can't be shocked as people, uh, believers and in our morality, to, that the world is going to be the world. And, uh, you know, we kind of see it on everybody outraged with the Olympics. And I, I get it rightfully so because that was kind of wild. I mean, we just out here just well, like, where did this even come from? Like, this is just, so you kind of engaging in all this. It's like, what is our response? Where do we go? Do I take to my social media platforms and let everybody know what I think? And this is what it is. Here's what I know. If the world's going to be good at being the world, the church has to be better at being the church. We got to get better. We got to get better. And, and if they're going to get, if the world's going to get loud, we got to get louder. And there is this sound that actually drowns out the noise of culture, and it's called prayer. And it's something that we connect our lives to, connect our hearts to, to realize that th whatever, you know, this weekend, the perversion, this, that, and the other, by the way, that's not the last thing that's going to happen, guys. Like, like it's going to, every other week there's going to be a new thing that's going to be frustrating and, and we're going to, you know, oh, what do we do about this? You pray. We got to pray. We got to seek God's face. We need the hand of God. We need a move of God. We need a touch of God. And he's not going to do it if we stand idly by and let everybody else run down the road of what they want to do. We got to stand in the middle and say, no, we're going to bring Jesus back. We're going to bring the Holy Spirit back. We're going to let everybody know the church is not going anywhere. We're not weak. We're not backing down. We're standing up. We got a little boldness in our bones. There's a fire shut up in our bones, and we're going to pray this thing through. We will see the answer. We will see the breakthrough. We will see people's hearts healed, lives changed, people turned around. When the church stands up, I'm telling you, God gets glory. And that's the only name we're going to glorify. So a lot of people are like, okay, where do we go? What do we do? Here's, I'm going to preach today what we're going to do. But I want to go to 2 Corinthians 4a because I believe that we can relate to this, that we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. I don't know if you ever felt this at the moment you leave this place. You're just you're pressure. Everything's a pressure. And again, I, I understand that maybe we're talking about culturally and worldly and everything that's going on outside. But also personally. If you can be honest personally, you, you feel the pressure. Pressure to perform. Pressure to be a mom, to be a dad. Pressure to be a husband, to be a wife, to make the right decision, to, to build that business. To, you have pressure in your life. You are pressed on every side. You have spiritual attacks coming against you. But God wants you to not see it the way you feel it. You feel it in a very deep way, in a hurtful way. But God said, I don't need you to see it that way. I want you to see that you're not crushed. This is not the end. It's not over. God's not done working. You're going to make it through. There's going to be an ending. You're going to exit this season. God's going to lift your head. You're going to get more out of this season than you thought you were going to get. Watch God work it together for your good. But what do we do when we press? What do we do when we're under pressure? I want to go to Acts, and I want to show you the response that we take right here and right now. I'm not going to preach the whole story of Acts, but I'm going to give you Acts 12.5, which says, But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. While Peter was in prison, what did the church do? Just, 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 they just, no, they just worshiped. They just, they just, they sang songs, they clapped, and then they congregated at their locations. They got together in their locations, and then we didn't see them for seven days. And then they got back together, and then, no, the church realized the power is in the prayer that is offered unto a God who could do anything. There is power in the believer that knows how to pray and petition and press back the gates of hell. You gotta learn to pray. 
you got to pray. Wasn't it the great theologian? Uh, what's his name? You got to, let me, let me think of it, Pastor Brian. MC Hammer. You have to pray just to make it today. Hey, hey. If y'all don't know that song, you ain't living. Yeah. You got to pray just to make it today. Big old baggy parachute pants. And they would do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> y'all don't know? Okay. And this is the reality, is, is that prayer was never meant to be your last resort. It was always meant to be your first response. And today, what did the church do? I know I went through a lot of different things. When they found out someone was in need, when they found out something was wrong, when they found out something was off, the church prayed. So that's what we're going we're gonna to conclude today, this series. I'll still have church with this. And the church prayed. And the church prayed. You're going to get your prayer back. And when you get your prayer back, it's like a country song. You're going to get your life back. You're going to get your dog back. It's something else. (laughs) And the church prayed. Holy Spirit, would you strengthen your people to pray again, to seek your face in all things, not when we need it, Not because it's appropriate or a good time to do it. May we pray often and always. May we pray without ceasing. And thank you, God, for a church that prays. I thank you that we see the power in prayer. Because the prayer is the connection point between us and heaven. And God, we need a funnel and a visitation from heaven now more than ever. So God, change this land and do it. Because your people are choosing to pray. God, we thank you for your mighty work in our lives. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen? Amen, amen. I'm going to start with Jesus' prayer life. Because if Jesus prayed, God knows me and you have to pray. Luke 5.16 says this, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. This tells me one thing. He understands the power of prayer. Jesus, son of God, wrapped in divinity, came from heaven, gets on earth and says, man, it's rough down here. I need to pray. (laughs) And you need to come to that same realization. Woo! It is some kind of spectacle up in these streets. We got to pray. And the second thing I realized is that he did not have kids because when you withdraw to lonely places, they find you. I don't care where you go. They sense you. They smell you. There is some kind of radar tracker that our kids have on us. I don't care who it is. I got four little boys. Even my one-year-old, he can waddle now. Like he walks, right? He can waddle. He'll find us. Oh, he, don't even like, don't get it twisted. He will find, and isn't it funny? It's like the moment you want to be spiritual, the moment you want to do something, you, you want to open, the moment you open your Bible, everything's in your face. Kids, distractions, text messages. I remember when I was in a hotel room, um, I, I got away, and it was, it's sometimes nice for me to get away, and I do it once or twice a year, and I go and I pray, and I pray for, for you, and I pray for this church, I pray for the future. God, what do you want? Vision, what are you going to do, Right? And so I remember this one time I was praying, and uh, I was in the hotel room, and I'm hearing from God, and there's worship music playing, and God's moving, and all this kind of stuff. Out of nowhere, it's the middle of the day, you just hear this massive vacuum sound outside of my door. And I'm getting pretty frustrated. I'm like, okay, it'll, it'll end. It'll end. And then it doesn't. An hour later, they're still going. I think they decided to clean the entire floor's carpet, or that whole floor, like fifth floor. They decided to clean the carpet on that day because there's only one dude staying up there, so we might as well do it anyways. First, I thought my kids found me. That's what I thought it was. I was like, they found me here. But I realized they were vacuumed. They were clean. And that lasted for hours. And it was loud, and I was frustrated. But I heard the Holy Spirit speak in the middle of that and say, why are you letting what's going on outside of the room Stop you from pursuing me in this room. Why are you letting outside noise stop you from lifting up a holy one in this moment? 
And I think a lot of us get so hung up on the, on the, net, the distraction, the noise outside of you that you stop short of seeking and praying and believing God for more. Well, God, if you only knew what was going on, God, if you could only hear how distracted, if you could only see my kids, if you could only realize the need that I have. And what happens is, is you're paying more attention to the noise. You're magnifying the noise. You're telling the noise, hey, God, look how big the noise is. Look how loud the noise is. Look how annoying the noise is. And God said, why don't you tell the noise and the need how big I am? Why don't you go remind the need and the noise that there is nothing that our God cannot do. But the only way that you're going to learn that and know that is if you pray. Because prayer is this communication connection with God. And it couples itself. It's both communication, but it's also petition. So sometimes I'm just talking because I need to process. And I can't process with people because people are messy and they tell everybody about what you process about. <laughs> And sometimes you just got to process with God. Other times I'm petitioning. I'm petitioning. I'm knocking on the door. God, this is what I'm believing for. This is what I need. God, this is what I see. God, would you do it in my life? And I will not learn the heart of God unless I learn to talk to God. Do you think I could have a relationship with my wife if I talk to her once a month? Right? Like at the, some point, first few months, fine. We'll figure it out. We're busy. We'll get together. We'll have a date night. After a year, we talked 12 times that year. After a year has gone by, our relationship will have gone dry. We will be at a distance. And yet we will realize that on an earthly level. But we don't realize that we are so distant from God, yet he's the one that's next to us at all times. But we only want to pray when we're in need. I had this thought that we have to learn to pray before we have to. Pray before you have to pray. Pray before everything else breaks down. Pray before the problem arrives. Pray before all hell breaks loose. Pray before it's difficult because then you're going to learn. I don't just pray when it's hard. I pray because he's good. I pray because he's God. I pray because he's in control and he's still on the throne and he knows the end from the beginning. I pray because he has a better answer than the answer that I have. I pray because he's got wisdom I need. I, pr I pray I got to get with God. And that brings this communication of prayer, brings this relationship with God that I desperately need. You desperately need a relationship with God out of the side of the context of Sunday morning. This is nothing but a reminder. It's a mass reminder that who God is in your life and he's faithful and he's good. But when you pray, you know it on a daily. You wake up with a fire shut up in your bones. You wake up knowing the king of the universe is on your side. You wake up with miracle working power in your life because I'm connected to the God with all power in his hands. That's what prayer does. It reminds me of who I am, but it reminds me of who he is. Here's what's so important. You ever heard this? I, I grew up in church. I grew up in church. I'm, I'm a cheesy church kid. We're going to stand in the gap for you and pray. You ever heard that? I always look at people like, what does that mean? Stand in the gap and pray. And maybe that's old school language. Maybe this is my mom saying that to me, the way that we grew up. But it means like, we're going to pray for you. But it's just a really churchy way to say, we're going to stand in the gap. You know what this means? And this is something I think that we really need to do. We need to learn that when we pray, we grab the hand of God. But also, you need to grab the hand of that need. And you need to introduce them to each other. So when you're praying, I'm not just praying, God, look at my need. I'm just, this is, I'm, I'm, just help. No, I'm saying, God, I need you, and I'm going to grab your hand. Because prayer doesn't change you, it changes me. Prayer doesn't change God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Prayer is the one that changes. I'm, I'm the one that's changed. So God, I need you. And you, prayer grabs the hand of God. And then you grab the hand of your need. And you, hey, God, here's my need. By the way, need, you have no shot. Because here's my miracle working, mighty hand. God. 
And so when I stand in the gap, I don't do it once. I stay in the gap. I don't stand in it, I stay in it. There are everything in your life you prayed for one time over that need, and when God didn't do it, you lost faith. Imagine, shouldn't God lose faith in us for praying once? Instead of us losing faith in God for not answering once? Right? Like, because we get, we're so fickle, like, we're like, no, God is asking us, here's why. Because again, prayer changes your character, not his. So a lot of times the things that you're praying for, the answer is the change that will happen to you when you learn to persistently pray. I needed that, I needed that, but by the time you have a three-week, four-week, four-year prayer life now, you're a whole different person asking for different things. Now you look at needs and you laugh because you understand that God can meet all needs according to his riches and glory. And every time you have a need, it's no longer a detriment. Now it's an opportunity for God to move. So you grab the hand of God and you grab the hand of whatever is going on in your life, whatever sickness is bothering you, whatever impossibility is going on, whatever is going on in the world today. And you say, you know what? I'm going to stay right here. And I'm going to keep introducing every need, every problem, every issue, every, every defunct thing. And I'm going to say, God, I'm going to stay right here in the middle. And it's going to be tense. It's going to be pressure. But I will not be crushed because I know I will see the glory of God if I stand on the solid rock. And as long as I get God introduced to my failures, struggles, needs, miracles, I'm going to see his word prevail. You got to have a tenacity in your faith. You have to have the ability to keep going back. Keep grabbing the hand. I think the problem is that so many people are holding hands only with needs. Like lift up your need. I'll lift up my need real easy. I, I walk with my need. My need talks to me. What I need in life, I hear from it daily. But imagine if you could replace that with the voice of the Holy Spirit. Saying, I know that's what I need, but I have all I need. I know that you're dragging me down, but I know God is going to provide a better word for you than the words that I can speak over you. Introduce them and watch God. Because here's what I know. When you begin to pray, there will be answers that happen. There are some people in this room that just years ago were super single. Like, you couldn't find a date to save your life. You get a little anointing, and you lifted your hands during worship, and you started to look a little attractive to someone. So you prayed, and you got married. And that person that you prayed for is now all that you pray about. Because <laughs> what was your prayer is now your pressure. Man, I, I want kids, and, and we'll pray for kids, and... You know, and then all of a sudden, just like us, like, man, praying, we get have kids, and all of a sudden, we look, we have four. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Where'd where you come from? <laughs> and now we have a dog. <laughs> My oldest son is on the front row by, um, I did not agree for, to that, but he did just say, we need a girl. Why would you say that? <laughs> I bought you a puppy that is a female. And you know it. I love you, Beckham. So <clears throat> what, what was like, man, what, and then what are they? They're beautiful. They're amazing. They're gifts from God, but it's pressure. It's, it's, it's tiredness. I'm weak now. I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated now. I'm, and a lot of times we try to fix it with our own merit and strength. And when we do things in our own strength, we are left empty. Where did your prayer life go? It left with the pressure. It left with the needs. And God's saying, would you reconnect to me and make sure that your previous prayer list does not look like your current complaint list? Because you've got to be really careful. Because today's complaint list could look a lot like everything that you prayed into your life. 
Because God is good at answering when you pray. And he'll give it to you. But you want to be able to steward answers well enough that you can walk with God and not say, man, I, he gave it to me. I can't believe he did. And now I, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know where to go from here. You want to develop as a man of God. You want to develop as a woman of God so that when you get the answer of God, you will be able to handle what he just gave you. What good is a blessing too soon? If you can't handle that blessing, God's like, man, God, give me a million dollars. He's like, you won't even give off of it. What, 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 what are we talking about? <laughs> right? Like, he's saying, I want to give it to you, but your prayer life is what changes you. You're out here trying to work hard, read self-help books, pray. I need three more podcasts. Just wait until I'm done. I'm going to get through it. Awesome. Grow in wisdom. That's great. I'm fine with it. But if you do that, if you podcast more than pray, you need a PhD in prayer. That's what you need to be a doctor in, how to pray. Because you're going to learn the more you grow in life and the more you go in life, you cannot leave your prayer on the back burner. It's going to have to grow with you. And as you journey and as you begin to pray, you can't just pray over your food and your fried chicken. God bless this Taco Bell. He ain't touching it. <laughs> he ain't touching your Taco Bell. Let's just be so honest. <laughs> Ooh. But we sense that our prayer, it like begins and ends in moments like that. And I know food isn't easy. It's a low-hanging fruit. But we do pray over, you know, stuff like that. Like I, I even love the one that, you know, it's holidays. You're going shopping. I'm going to pray over a parking spot. <laughs> I'm not mad at it, you know. But if God really stopped heaven <laughs> to make that person back out, <laughs> I don't know, maybe just for my wife, like just to keep her happy, because she does it all the time. She's, she's a parking lot prayer warrior. She, she's a prayer warrior. So, and and I, he's so good that he just might. But there was a moment where we didn't find one up front, and you said, and I prayed. And I was like, oh, darn. Like, I, <laughs> God, God must have not heard. <laughs> Maybe he wanted us to walk, burn some calories. So, that's, it's, is it bad? No, it's not bad at all. But I do believe that casual prayers will give us casual answers. So if we stop only at small things, then we will only reap small things. And I want to get after this a little bit because you're praying over right here and right now. I want to see God move mightily in my life. I want to see God move mightily at your work, mightily in your family, mightily in your future. So why don't you begin to prophesy through prayer what God can do, what God will do over your life, and watch your words meet heaven, and watch heaven respond to those words. Because I am so concerned that prayerlessness is plaguing the church. And prayerlessness is the spiritual cancer of the church. It's what keeps us apathetic and cold to the things of God. That we almost assume that God's just gonna do it and he's just gonna do it his way. Even if I say it or I don't say it. He's just gonna, but as long as I've read the Bible, there have been trajectories changed. Stories changed flipped upside down on the basis of people that prayed. I would never know the answer if God would have done it even if they didn't pray, but I do know it did happen and they did pray. So I would rather live on the side of I'm going to do this daily, not when it's a necessity. I'm going to do this all the time, even if it's good in your life. May prayerlessness not start to seep into your home, causing you to compromise and sit back on some things. Prayer keeps you hot to the things of God. I liken your spiritual life to a faucet or like a shower. There's, there's some crazy people in here. You get in the shower the moment you turn the water on. You're crazy. <laughs> you've lost your mind. I don't know, maybe you've just kind of read about it. You're like, well, cold showers 
are good for you. Oh, you're in there yet? Good, do you? <laughs> so, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to take a normal shower like a normal human. And so what do you do? You turn the water on, put any faucet or any shower, what? What do you do? You turn it on and you, you wait. And you wait till it gets warm enough for your liking. And you can crank that sucker all the way up and you get it hot up in that mug. But what do you have to do? You have to wait till it warms up. I feel like a lot of our spiritual life is our faucet, our life, the switch, it's turned off. Most of the time. Day to day, week to week. Sometimes when you come into Sunday, we'll turn it back on. And you'll get warm to the things of God again. You'll, get, you'll become receptive to the ways of God again. You'll hear the voice of God again. And then you'll feel like Jeremiah, like a fire shut up in my bones. And then you'll leave here not realizing it is my job to keep that connection alive. And I got to keep that faucet on. My prayer for the church isn't for you to come in and just get hot on a Sunday from a word and worship that was given to you, for, but for to stay hot on a daily basis that when I pray, I stay open with my ears, my heart is receptive, my soul can hear him, God, would you speak again? And I don't need and somebody else, an external word to hit my life. I got all the words I need because I've been seeking the one who releases the the word over my life. So I stay warmed up. So I come in here and I, I come in here ready to worship. And I know sometimes you come in here, you're going to come in here cold. You're going to come in here broken. You're going to come in here lift, limping a little bit and that's okay. But what if you came in off the back of a prayer life and you prayed through every fire, prayed through every moment, prayed through every storm, prayed through every season, prayed through every trial, prayed through every difficulty only to arrive here not even needing the first worship song, but you were already engaged with the Holy of Holies. You were already there in the throne room and you didn't need it. You were saying, you know what? God, I can already hear you. I can already sense you. I can already feel you working on my behalf. Prayer moves you from natural to supernatural. And I don't want to live so natural that I miss the supernatural move of God in my life. He can do what no man can do. And it's going to roll on the road of prayer. Miracles on the road of prayer. Revival on the road of prayer. Everything that you're believing for might be on the other side of your prayer life. So at some point in your life, and I know this, that pain is a great teacher. But the number one thing pain teaches us is prayer. So why wait for pain to teach you before you actually do it? Why not realize that I cannot dance with prayerlessness because that's a dangerous place to be. Prayerlessness, it means my life is absent of breakthrough. Prayerlessness creates vacancy in the heart of a person. Did you know prayerlessness feeds the lack in your life and the lack becomes bigger and bigger and bigger? But prayer will stand right there when I grab the hand of God. Because I've already been holding on. I've already been gripped by what I've been going through. But I'm going to grab the hand of God. And I'm going to introduce him to every valley that I've been walking through. But you've got to realize that prayer brings protection, provision, clarity, breakthrough, healing. The hand of God, miracles, open doors. You know what I love that prayer brings? Discernment. That's a big one right now. Prayer brings discernment. You ever watch that old school TV show where they had to choose a door and behind whatever door you chose, that was the prize you got? Anybody ever watch TV? <laughs> do, you, do, you, do, you, do you have electricity in your house? <laughs> so, so, okay, there's all these doors, right? And whatever door you choose, that's the prize you get. And, and I, you know, you would watch it, and I remember just way back, it, some dude opened it, and it was like a pony, which is like so inappropriate because like, what are you going to do with a pony? I get it. Some of you, you're in Texas. You have a farm. You get excited about that. Not me, right? Like, okay, you got a pony. What are you going to do with that? If I would have known what was behind it, and another guy opened it, and it was like just a, it was just a paper bag, and nothing's in it, right? Like, okay, and then there's only like one good thing behind five doors, Oh, if I would have known what was behind the door, I would have chosen a different door. That's exactly how you live every day without prayer. You're guessing at which door is the right one to open, and you're hoping it's the right one. Prayer gives you discernment to see beyond 
your eyes. It becomes your spiritual eyes. It's a sense. It's an, it's an urge. It's an unction in your soul to say, that door is a no. <laughs> and you don't even know why. You're just moving away from it. And you're coming over here. You're like, I, what are you doing? I don't know. I can't explain it. But I connected with God this morning, and I'm led by him, and the Holy Spirit is leading me in this direction. I believe that every single one of us is going to have hours of tape in heaven of doors that we could have opened, but God rescued us by his sovereign hand from opening every detrimental door because we chose to pray. See, I don't know what he rescued me from. So a lot of times my worship is also based on things I don't know he did. He is so good. He's protecting me from things I didn't even know he protected me from. So God, I thank you for all the things that I know you've done. I also thank you for all the things I don't know you've done. Because that list is probably greater than the... Come on now. And so now I'm looking at this realizing I got to pray. To realize, where to, what's my next step? What decision do I make with my kids? What kind of conversation do I have with my wife? What do I do with this business? Where do I go from here? God, I need your help. I pray. I pray. I pray. And I contend. And I petition. And I believe. And watch God nudge you, urge you, move you away from the danger that you would have led yourself down because you said, that's what I want. That's the one I want. God said, that's fine, but it may not be the one you need. And you gotta learn that when we pray, it doesn't mean you get your way. Prayer doesn't mean you get your way. It means you get his will. So, so many people will be like, man, I'm praying and I'm weaponizing my prayer to get God to do what he should do for me. I don't weaponize prayer because it doesn't work that way. God's not up there being like, you got me on that one. You were, your, your words were very persuasive and you got me. It was never built for that. Now, there is an allowance of us just to release and just to ask and to pray. I've learned this. You know, my dad always instilled this statement in me. You have not because you ask not. And I live with that. My wife can tell you. I have taken that spiritual principle and made it practical. It says this. Let me show you the scripture and I'll tell you the story. James 4 says this. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. So that's where you, you have not because you ask not. But look at the heart behind of asking for what you want. Look at this. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. So I love it because it's saying, hey, unleash the prayer. Also, make sure you're open enough for God to correct you at the same time. But there is this principle, you have not because you ask not. I, you do it in the spirit. Some of y'all need to ask bigger, pray bigger, believe bigger. Now, it is translated for me, just in a funny way, into my practical life, that I will go. I remember it was one of our first dates, and, like, you got your meal wrong. She's the kind of person, my wife's the kind of person, like, they'll bring out, she'll be like, I want a steak. They'll bring out a lobster. She's like, it's fine. And I'm over here like, you know, you, we did not pay for that. You paid for the other item. Why don't you? I don't want to ask him. I don't want to. I don't want to. So it's two, two very different personalities, right? I say take it back. She says I'm just gonna eat it. Don't tell. Don't say anything. I don't want this to be awkward. And so I remember it was kind of like order was weird, order was wrong, whatever. And so by the end, she's like, she was so sorry. The waiters, waitress was so sweet. She's like, you know, I'm so sorry. We'll comp the meal and everything like that. But my dad taught me, you have not because you ask not. So I'm not gonna stop at the minimum. I'm going to see press down, shaking together. Let's see that thing running over. Can I see your dessert menu? And she brings the dessert menu. I said, you know what? It's just, could I have one of these as well? It's our first date. It was the wrong meal. She said, it's fine. And I got a free cake. What's the spiritual lesson? If you ask God, he'll give you cake. I don't know. 
And everywhere I go, we've been married 11 years, and she's learned this now. I'll be in a drive-thru and get an extra fry. I'll just be like, hey, you got one back there? Yeah, of course we do. And I'll get free stuff. I don't know if I'm supposed to. Maybe God will correct me one day. <laughs> but I feel like there's an anointing on this. <laughs> because, again, you have not because you ask not. So I'm, I'm going to ask. But here's what's funny. I'll take it all the way to the level of, okay, you know, being in church and, you know, big things and, you know, projects, this, and, uh, you know, a lot of them we're trying to figure out where to go with all the church. I'll, I'll just say, hey, can I have it? Yeah. That, if a building ever came available over the last, like, six years, I'd be like, awesome, that's your price. Can I have it? Legit. Hasn't happened yet, but <laughs> some of y'all would be like, man, is he about to tell us that he just got a free building? <laughs> Uh, you're not praying enough, so no, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't get it. We didn't get it. <laughs> but it's soon. But spiritually, isn't this the same thing? Like, why do we stop over, why not in the spirit are we not walking around with boldness? Why are we so timid? Like, uh, if God wants me to have it, I'm over here like swinging for the fences. No, God wants me to have it and more. I'm going to believe in the God of the universe that he's going to open that door. And if it's too, if I get too silly with it, if I get too carnal with it, I will let God convict me, and I'm okay with that. Be okay with, you know what, that's on me, God. I prayed a little bit too, too much in my flesh. Just remind me, and I'll be sensitive enough to change. But I don't want to be over here. Just, I don't know, God. I just, no, I'm going to ask. I'm going to believe. And I'm going to pray with faith. I'm going to pray with faith. And look at this in James 5. James 5, right? The prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. And the Lord will raise them up. That's for somebody in here that is dealing either with sickness in your body or sickness in a family member or a friend's body. They, I've done a lot of hospital visits. And a lot of times, here's what I, I don't walk in there thinking, man, God, I hope you, I hope you do it. What kind of, you wouldn't want me to, you wouldn't ask me to come to your bedside in the, in the hospital if you knew I thought that. Well, you you, we got to get somebody that's just going to walk in. Because, you know, we can't get Pastor Micah. He, he comes in saying, well, God, let it be your will. It will be his will. Yes. When we pray, we don't get, he get his will. We get his will, it's going to happen every single time. Yes, absolutely. However, I've learned that the fervent prayer avails much. So when I enter the space in that place of a great miracle that is needing to happen, I did not walk in with my dad on his deathbed and say, God, you know, it's up to you. What are we playing, Yahtzee with a life over here? No, we're walking in with some boldness saying, God, I believe the same resurrection power that raised you from the grave is the same resurrection power that will raise him from the grave. I'll praise you whether you do it or not, but I know who you are. I've seen too much to go back now. You're the God who can do anything at any time. So God, would you raise this body back up? Do you realize the power that you got in the prayer that is offered to an almighty God? Now, can I reason with you? Because I do understand that I remember when I first told this story, 2019, 2020, kind of when it was all happening. I remember when I, offered, I said this story, there was like one young girl who wasn't really, oh, she was kind of young in faith and everything like that. She got frustrated and left the church, but she wasn't like super angry at it. She just left the church because she said, well, my dad died when I prayed. And apparently yours didn't. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you, you want to unfold some things. Well, my, my, my aunt died at 33 of cancer. So, so we can try to figure out who God is. But it's all going to leave us more frustrated than when we started. All I know is I'm praying to a God who can and a God who will. The outcome is on him. And I have to have this disposition of healing my healing perspective is this. I will see healing on this earth. But if God takes him, then he will be healed in heaven. I don't know which 
Is he going to be healed on this side of heaven or in heaven? I'm okay with both, but I'm going to pray like he's going to stay. I'm going to pray like cancer is going to be gone. I'm going to pray like I'm going to get out of this poverty mentality. I'm going to pray like this isn't the end of my story. I'm going to pray for this loneliness to be met by the answer of God. I'm going to pray for breakthrough to happen in my life. I'm going to pray for audacious finances to hit my world. I'm going to pray for God to open doors that no man can open and shut doors that no man can shut. I'm going to pray the sovereignty of heaven. I'm going to pray for favor among kings and CEOs in this land. I'm going to pray that God brings me where I can't bring me. I'm going to pray for God to elevate me. I'm going to pray for God to expand Jabez, expand my territory. God, would you make this life bigger? God is not offended by your big prayers. He might be by your small ones. Because your prayer indicates your belief and who he is. I believe he could do everything. And at some point, he's going to tell me, you're too in your flesh. Get off the Mercedes parking lot. You're not getting that. I was laying hands. Yes, in the name of, I feel the, the G and G wagon stands for God. And you have just laying hands, anointing oil. God's like, you missed it. <laughs> you didn't get it on that one. But it's some, I'm not even mad at that, though. Why? Because you're believing in a big God that could do all things. And what I do know is that you go there in prayer before you get there in person. You go there in prayer before you get there in person. Beckham asked me the other day, laying down right now on the front row, he asked me the other day, Daddy, can I drive your truck? <laughs> He's eight years old. You think I'm over here like, yes, son, hop in. It's going to be a great idea. <laughs> right, this is going to be so good. No, it's going to be terrible if I let him drive. Am I mad that he asked? No. Because he's just, he's asking for something that he will eventually receive. But it's just not the right timing. He's too young for it. And so if he keeps asking, there will be a day he grows into it. And what you've got to realize is that everything that you're praying for has already been paid for. It doesn't just rhyme. It's actually good. Watch this. Uh, my, my other sons, I got a lot of them. <laughs> oh, we, we walk into our pantry often, and they will grab some kind of bag of cookies or some kind of candy or something like that right before dinner, though. And that's the problem. Wrong time, before dinner. And they say, Dad, can I have this? No. They will throw a fit. They will fake cry. The wine, no, I don't, I don't want you to have that right now because I have a better idea. I have a different idea in mind. But here's the truth of it. You can, you can have it in the right timing because why? It's already paid for. I paid for that box of cookies a long time ago. So what you're contending for is paid for, but it might not be answered for yet. So live in this tension of, what I'm praying for, it's paid, for, it's done, it's taken care of. Even though it's paid for, I might not be able to consume it yet. I might not have gotten it yet, but it's not going to keep me from asking and contending, God, would you do it? God, would you? It just, okay, with the kids, since we're on a, on a streak right now, because this happened Friday. They drove me nuts asking me to go watch a new Minion movie. Nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Online, you didn't hear that? My son's cheered. Oh. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, 30 minutes. I wanted to take a nap. I was just done. Begged and begged and begged and begged. I wouldn't have done it unless they asked as many times as they asked. And I found myself buying $80 worth of popcorn and ices. Why? Because they learned the art of persistence and knocking. So I wasn't going to do it, but I did it because they had such a heart for it. 
I wonder if God just looks at you sometimes and says, what you're asking for is not bad, but you're just not hungry enough for it. Would you knock again? Don't just offer up one or two weeks of prayers. I've been praying years for this. See, I'm a product of a mom that prayed for years, not weeks. That every moment that I didn't even know that I had a sovereign guide on my side, I didn't even know that, but I had a mom for decades pray and believing. And sometimes you won't see that answer until well down the road. But that's why God's saying, would you learn to knock? That's why Jeremiah 32, 7 says, I'm the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Nothing is too hard for God. And Luke eleven nine 9 says, so I say to you, ask. So I say to you, literally, ask. Like, it's right there, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and it'll be open. You just got to stay there. I'm going to stay at the heart of God. I'm not going to stay at the heart of my boss. I'm not just going to stay at the feet of all my problems. I'm going to stay at the door of heaven and contend. And I'm going to petition. And may I learn that this noise is the noise needed to drown out hell in my life. That if I keep knocking, I don't have time to answer wrong doors. I don't got time to walk down sinful roads. I don't have time to, to, to deal with the devil while I'm knocking at heaven's door. My desires have changed. It says he will give you the desires of your heart. Let's flip that on its head. He's not going to give you what you desire for. He's going to give you what you should desire for. Woo. You should desire these things. That's what he's going to tell you. And the more you pray, the more you see the character of God in your life. Ask, it'll be given. Seek, you will find. Knock, it'll be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. What door do you feel like is still closed, but you stopped knocking, stopped asking, because you thought God moved on from it? When in fact, it wasn't that God moved on, it was that you did. God's saying, I want you to come back to that place. Can you stand to your feet? We're going to learn how to pray. I believe God is calling the church back to prayer in a very intimate and close way. Second Chronicles 7 may be my favorite prayer scripture. It may be one that is needed for now more than ever. That if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Would you close your eyes and lift your hands? Father, sweep through this place. Teach us to pray again. Teach us to ask again. Teach us to believe again. Teach us to petition and knock and seek. And Here's what I want you to do with every eye closed. Holy Spirit, show me something for you to do, just in the, just in the spiritual sense. Would you grab the hand of your need right now, and just in your heart and you got the hand of the miracle you're believing for, the, the gap, the deficiency, the pain, whatever it is. It could be personal, it could be financial, it could be anything. Grab the hand of that knee. And as you begin to pray, I want you to see that you're grabbing the hand of God. Grab onto the hand of your maker. And I want you in the spirit to see that you are introducing God to your need. And God, you do not know how to fail. As every one of your children is doing this right now, 
as we're showing who you are to the needs that we have. I pray in this place, we will stay in this position. That God, you can do all things, for nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is beyond you, God. So may this be a moment where our faith is strengthened in your name and who you are. May every need dissipate and be answered. I pray that when we begin to pray faithfully, answers will come quickly. Well, who that's for? I just feel like an answer is going to come quickly. I pray you expedite the answers to our prayers. I pray that we learn to pray audacious prayers. As Moses prayed for the Red Sea to split, and you were the God who did it. As Jabez prayed for his territory to be expanded, and you're the God who did it. God, I thank you that right now you're the same God that can do in our lives the impossible and any miracle. We pray for all health. If there is any sickness in this room or if there's any sickness connected to our family and friends, I thank you that under the power of the blood of Jesus and through the power of prayer, we will see the answer and we will see that by your stripes, we've been healed. So God, we claim that healing, we receive that healing, we declare that healing, we walk in that healing, and I thank you that right now you're doing a work in our lives. And God, most importantly, which was the goal today, teach us to pray daily. May we pray often, may we pray always, and we, may we pray over everything. Pray over, whether we think it's, God, we pray over everything. We cover everything with the blood of Jesus. We cover everything with the power, his resurrection power.